Ukrainian Defense Minister stood atop a podium and demolished NATO's agenda. Yes, this happened. And we will tell you all about it. But before that, if you are a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. We publish three videos a day. First at 9.15 a.m. EST. Second at 1.30 p.m. EST. The third at 5.30 p.m. EST. So if that's of interest to you, Whenever your co-workers ask you to appear as a proxy for them in office, ask for $100 billion. That's a fair price. Okay, let's begin. A proxy as we understand it refers to an individual bestowed with the authority to act on behalf of another or to serve as a substitute. Remember, this principle forms the crux of our discussion. Since February 2022, the Western mainstream media has been diligently spilling a narrative portraying Ukraine as a fiercely independent state that found itself abruptly ensnared by Russian aggression. The storyline devoured by the credulous masses omits a crucial perspective. The Kremlin has labeled the Kiev regime as a NATO proxy, a stance that has provoked vehement backlash from Western MSM and various NATO country leaders. This narrative aggressively promoted by the US-led West's MSM frames Putin's apprehensions as ludicrous, asserting that the notion of Ukraine's military alliance with NATO posing a danger to Russia is unfounded. Following this narrative, their perception managers have doubled down, painting Russia's special operation as a quest for imperialism rather than an act of self-defense. Now meet Alexei Reznikov, a leading man, who just so happens to be the Ukrainian defense minister. Now, if the Western narrative is to be believed, Reznikov is not just your average Joe in a suit, or no. He is depicted as the epitome of Vela, a paragon of moral integrity, practically oozing superhero vibes from every pore. Hence, it is crucial to underline that pegging Reznikov as a Russian agent, a propagandist, or even mildly Russian-friendly ventures into the realm of fantasy. This disclaimer comes in handy, especially considering the default reaction to anything he might say that doesn't sing Ukraine's praises is to label him a Russian parrot. So before anyone jumps to conclusions, let's get this straight. Criticizing or presenting an alternative viewpoint doesn't automatically hand you a ticket to the Russian parrot club, okay? Now, what bombshell did our superhero Alexei Reznikov drop? He declared on national TV that Ukraine is, in fact, a NATO proxy. In his own words, quote, Today, Ukraine is addressing the threat of Russia. We're carrying out NATO's mission today without shedding their blood. We shed our blood, so we expect them to provide weapons. End quote. He admitted. This candid revelation from Reznikov not only offers a reality check, but also circles back to our initial discussion on proxies. By linking his statement to the military strategic dynamics of the Ukrainian conflict, Reznikov's admission unequivocally confirms Ukraine's status as a NATO proxy by definition. So as it turns out, our valiant Ukrainian defense minister, far from being a figment of propagandist imagination, has grounded us back to reality, aligning perfectly with our opening act on what constitutes a proxy. In what can only be described as a candid slip or perhaps a strategic outcry, Reznikov deviated from the script laid out by his benefactors. One could argue that Reznikov's revelation wasn't a calculated move to dismantle the carefully constructed narrative that has justified the redirection of some $100 billion of taxpayer money towards Ukraine. What we are witnessing might just be a classic case of emotional venting gone public. Frustrated by NATO's reluctance to open its armory doors as widely as Kiev would like, Reznikov might have let his guard down, revealing a truth many have suspected but few have dared to articulate. Now let's get something straight. The folks living comfortably in the US-led West's 
so-called golden billion are blissfully unaware of the storm brewing right under their noses thanks to their trusted mainstream media's selective amnesia. This isn't just about some run-of-the-mill political scandal. It's about the deliberate diversion of approximately $100 billion of the public's hard-earned tax dollars. Contrary to the tall tales of protecting Ukraine from Russian aggression, these funds were essentially poured into turning Ukraine into NATO's pawn on the chessboard of hybrid warfare against Russia. And for what? Not for the lofty ideals of democracy or human rights, but for a calculated Cold War-style maneuver in a power play against Russia aimed at preserving a crumbling, unipolar world order. Well, that's a shame. And you give a monkey the finest word, it will still scratch its arse with it. So after $100 billion, here is how Ukraine is faring down to its last brigade.